Hello, I'm Martha Hudson. I'm happy to welcome you to today's Lenten series based on the book by Richard Foster, Celebration of Discipline. I'm sure you've seen this several times already, and we do have several copies in our church library if you wish to delve into this a little bit further. Our guest today is the Reverend Dr. Shelley Poe. Shelley was ordained in 2007 by the Con Congregational Christian Churches and is now the pastor of Safe Harbor Family Church, which happens to meet here in Clinton. Uh, they share space uh, each uh, Sunday with the Episcopal Church of the Creator. Shelley uh, holds a PhD in Religious Studies from the University of Virginia. She was awarded an MDiv from Princeton Theological Seminary, and she has other uh, uh, degrees as well. She is an author and has taught numerous collegiate courses uh, in universities across the United States. She is particularly interested in the study of teaching and learning. As you can see, Dr. Poe is uniquely qualified to lead us this week as we explore the discipline of study. Study. It uh, means several things to us. A lot of things probably uh, would pop up in common among us. Uh, school books, uh, new concepts, facts, uh, algebraic equations, uh, plane geometry about did me in. Uh, all of these designed to help us acquire the general meaning of a subject. Well, Richard Foster, the author of our text for this series, writes that the spiritual studier not only studies text for general meaning, but also seeks to know what in the text means for him personally, how he can relate to it, how he can apply it in his life, he or she. This discipline involves studying text but also studying ourselves. We are so glad to have Dr. Poe here today to lead us in this journey of study during Lent. Please pray with me. Our Father, we are grateful for all of your blessings. We are grateful for Dr. Poe and her willingness to share with us. Uh, we ask that you would bless her today, be with her especially as, as she speaks to us. And we pray that we would, with the leading and the guidance of your dear Holy Spirit, seek to examine our own lives during this time of Lent. In Jesus' name, amen.
Hello, good morning, good afternoon, whatever time it might be that you are receiving this message. My name is Shelley Poe, and I'm the pastor at Safe Harbor Family Church, United Church of Christ. I'm so glad to be able to share with you in this Lenten series, and I want to thank your pastors, Courtney and Susan, for reaching out to me. I've been asked to address the topic of study because of my academic background. I have an MDiv from Princeton Theological Seminary and a PhD in Religious Studies from the University of Virginia. I moved to Jackson to teach Religious Studies at Millsaps College, which I did for six years, and now I am a visiting professor at Iliff School of Theology in Denver, Colorado. And of course, I'm also the senior pastor at Safe Harbor. I've authored a couple books and edited a few more, and I have written a number of journal articles and book chapters. All that is to say my life has been full of study. And in fact, when people ask me about my spiritual life, it is very hard for me to disentangle my spiritual life from my intellectual life. So I was glad to receive the opportunity to reflect on the topic of study with you. And I hope that some of what I might introduce here could be beneficial for you. The book that you're reading in your Lenten study makes a number of claims that I'll reintroduce to you here and I'll simply add my comments along the way. So first, Foster says that people's lives are transformed through the mind, through pursuing the truth. And he quotes that famous scripture, the truth will set you free. As a scholar and teacher, of course, this warms my heart. I do believe that people's lives are transformed through the mind because I've seen it happen over and over again in the lives of my students. They come to me with a certain set of ideas and then through study in our courses, they entertain different ideas and they find their minds and hearts changed over a semester's time, over a year's time. It's amazing to watch. And I suspect you've had this experience as well, watching your children learn or even reflecting on the ways you have changed as a person when you went to college or had some other kind of training. So I want to affirm what Foster is pointing to here. At the same time, I think it is important to remember that although the truth will set us free, we don't have direct access to the truth. In many cases, we don't actually know what the truth is. <laughs> I like to say that we don't have direct access to big T truth, the objective truth, the untouchable, unassailable truth. And that's because we're involved in searching, finding, formulating, and understanding the truth. And we, are human beings with our own perspectives and experiences and ways of thinking. And so while the truth may be able to set us free, the finding and identifying of the truth is a lot harder than we might imagine and a lot harder than we might wish. We want to find the big T truth, but we must rest content with our small T truths. Thankfully, that's all we need, I think. We need to find those small truths that can challenge us renew our minds, and give us renewed energy. And in a month's time or a year's time, those little tea truths might change, and that's just fine. I bet you've experienced this when you've read a book, maybe in high school or college, and you thought that it was the deepest, most illuminating book you've ever read. So you find the book again on your shelf 10 years later or whatever, and decide to dive in, to relive the excitement, to refresh your memory. And wouldn't you know it, the truth that you found there now doesn't seem <laughs> very interesting. It doesn't seem to be as you remember. Maybe it seems banal now, mundane, or altogether deficient. Well, that's why we have to keep studying throughout our lives, because different ideas will strike us different ways in different seasons of our lives. And as long as we're engaged in the discipline of study with humility, we can be sure to find new truths along the way. Second, Foster also talks about habits of thought that are developed through the study of the Bible, Christian literature, and also nature and human relationships. One of the most useful habits of mind that I have experienced because of my study is the ability to transcend the moment for just a little while and simply observe what is happening. In study, we learn how to extract ourselves from the present moment for just a little while and to see it from a third person perspective. 
This is really useful when we find ourselves in heated discussions or when our feelings are hurt in some way. As learners who are habituated in the practice of study, we can take a step back and say, okay, what's going on here? Person A is saying X. Their reasons for saying it are Y and Z. Okay, I can understand what they're saying and why they're saying it because I too have had such an experience as that, for example. And then I find that in such situations, simply saying as much can ease the situation and help genuine conversation and genuine understanding to occur between people. So the discipline of study is not only important for intellectual engagement, but it also has practical, helpful implications. We can become observers of our own lives and our own small moments, apply our habits of the mind to those situations, and then learn from them as well. Finally, Foster gives us four steps in the process of study, and they are repetition, concentration, comprehension, and reflection. All four are important. We have to read things more than once to truly understand them. We have to pay attention to achieve insight or comprehension. And we have to reflect on the significance of the object of study. What I'm really struck by in these four steps is that second one concentration, especially now when we have phones glued to our hands or our pockets, and many of us are working from home, we have so many distractions that are so hard to get away from. For myself, I need quiet and I need to be alone to truly study. So I appreciate the suggestion Foster gives to get away from one's normal surroundings and take a retreat. But I also know, as the mother of a toddler, and stepmother of two teenage boys, and caretaker of a miniature dachshund who barks more than she needs to, sometimes we will have interruptions. So what is important for me is to carve out just two hours each day or whatever it might be, which is my quiet time to research, study, and write. And in these two hours, come hell or high water, you will find me in the same place at my desk with my phone far away. And if I'm interrupted, I breathe a deep breath and then get back to it. This breathing of a deep breath is the most important part of concentrating for me. To recognize a distraction, breathe as deeply as possible, and then to start again. I hope some of my reflections here have resonated with you. Thanks again for the opportunity to speak with you, and I do hope to meet some of you in person at some point in the future. For now, many blessings on your Lenten season.